Okay, it is currently like 6 o'clock in the morning. And the reason that I am up so early is because we are finally getting the rest of my stuff moved from my grandmother's house. We think we have somebody that is going to buy the house. So we're just praying, praying, praying that it goes through because this has been a very long process and we're ready to just be through with it. But yeah, we're actually getting ready to go pick up my grandmother and head to Philadelphia, Mississippi. Oh boy, we definitely got our work cut out for us. <laughs> I remember this little thing, little Jeff Gordon. Okay guys, so I know lately there's been some things changing with my videos and changing to my channel. One for instance being how I do my intros and that will probably be changing again soon. And also the outro, but I'm not sure if I'm going to change that or not. But I'm also doing something a little different with this vlog. And basically I'm compiling a couple of days into one vlog. Mainly I'm doing this because I didn't have enough content for just one day. And this might be something that I do from time to time in the future when there's times where I don't have enough content but I still want to document something. So there might be times where one or two or even just several days run together in one vlog. This probably isn't going to be a common occurrence but it might be something that I will have to do especially when going on this mission trip because I know there's going to be days where I'm not going to have internet access and I know there's going to be days where um, I'm gonna be very busy, so I might not have as much time to film things. But what I kept asking myself is whenever I do a vlog like this where it's several days, which verse of the day do I choose? So what I decided is that what you'll see with these type vlogs is after the content from one individual day is done, then I'll cut to a verse of the day, and then I'll go back to the next day's content, and then do the same thing again, go into the verse of the day, and so on and so forth. Again, this isn't going to be a common occurrence, but it might be something that y'all do see from time to time. So without further ado, let's do today's verse of the day. So today's verse comes from Romans chapter 6, verse 23, and it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So that verse is actually self-explanatory. Basically it says the cost of sinning is death. And as all of us being sinners, we all deserve death. But then it says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So it's saying that God sending Jesus down to die on the cross for us was his gift to be able to earn salvation. But that's it for the verse of the day. Let's get back to the video. Honestly, this isn't that good. What, the coffee? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I told you. <laughs> well, one thing is, it's a different brand, so it has a totally different taste. Yeah. Then you're putting, instead of sugar in it and milk in it, you're... Ugh. Okay, so yeah, that was a pretty crappy cup of coffee, but, you know, it got me a little bit awake, and I definitely needed it because today is going to be a long day. So I've got some good news. My grandmother's house finally sold. We closed on it yesterday, and now we just have to get everything out of it. If you look behind me, stuff everywhere. Literally over the past few months, we've already filled like 
three different U-Hauls. Like, their biggest U-Haul, as full as it would get, would just stuff around this house. And yet, it still feels like we haven't made a dent in it. I don't even know why you need this much stuff. But we are pressed for time today, and we have to get it all moved. And honestly, I only have a few hours of work that I can do before I have to go into work with my mom tonight. So I'm going to try and get as much work done as I possibly can, and then I'm going to take me and my grandmother back to Corinth, which is like a three-hour drive, and then I have to immediately get ready to go into the restaurant and work for my mom. So today is going to be very, very tiring. But we're actually getting uh, some Hispanic guys that the realtor knew that are going to come help us move some stuff. But anyways, uh, my dad left and I guess he's going to run an errand for my grandmother. So he told me to stay here and kind of just sort through things and that the Hispanic guys would be here in a little bit. Which is going to be kind of awkward, I guess, because he won't be here. And from what I understand, they don't speak much if any English and I failed to pass Spanish one I took it like three different years and never did finish it so my Spanish is very minimal so I guess I don't know maybe I'll just have to like do hand gestures which you guys know a lot of y'all like to talk about it that I do a lot of hand gestures so I don't know maybe it'll work but you know it's going to be kind of bittersweet to leave this place, so I kind of wanted to just video some of this and, you know, show y'all some of the cool things about this house that I spent so much of my childhood in and just grew up in. I loved this place growing up, and it's just going to be really hard to let it go. But, you know, we met the people that uh, bought the house. They came by and we showed them some of the things around here, and I genuinely hope that... uh they get as much joy out of it as I did, and that they will uh, be able to be blessed by this home. We spent some time talking with the people that bought the house, and it was this really nice uh, young black lady that was recently divorced. You know, we, we heard some of her story and all, and just really nice, really nice. Her and her father uh, were purchasing this together. He was helping her get it. She has, like, an 11 year old daughter which is awesome because I know with a young kid they're gonna love this place so yeah like I said it's gonna be hard to let this place go but you know I we knew it was time to let it go my grandmother needed to be close to us uh, to where we could take care of her so I hope these new people will just really enjoy this home but yeah she actually uh invited us that if we ever want to come back and visit and just see the old place that we're more than welcome to stop by and like I said she was really nice so you know who knows I might pay her a visit sometime but anyways I've been rambling a lot so enough of me talking let me show you some of the cool things about this house so the cool thing about this house especially if you're a little kid is that there was hiding spots everywhere this was like the holy grail of hide and seek. Mainly because there was like storage spots everywhere, but that made for really good places to hide. You could always find new places to hide. Here you've got closet in here. Got a closet here. More closet space there. And then this place, this was like the best feature for any kid. So let me show you what's so awesome about it. So you come in here, okay, like it's just a normal closet, but it's not. And we're right back out through here. we were just in there and came out across there then you also got a nice deck come out here and sit and back before all these trees were here uh, you could see out into a pasture and all the cows would be out there then you got a view of the pond over here which was also ours and then 
over there you had a school and they would have baseball games so before the trees were there sometimes we would just sit up here and get some binoculars and watch the baseball games. As a kid I can even remember going over and crossing the pond sometimes to go watch some of the baseball games and we'd go over there and catch fly balls. Oh just so many memories at this house. That pool looks really disgusting right now but I can remember a lot of pool parties here. This is the house that we had like a lot of family reunions at, a lot of like 4th of July pool parties, just uh, so much fun. And come in here and you cut dual hiding spots so you know take your pick and here's the front porch area you come out and just have a really good view of the ponds and then I'm sure you'll notice also that the house is like made of rock which since I love climbing I've always been a climber uh, I spent many days climbing on top of the house just pretending like I was a rock climber, climbing mountains and all that. It was a lot of fun. Anyways, uh, I think the Hispanics are here, so it's probably time to get to work. So maybe I'll get to show you all a little more in a little while. But for now, I'm going to go greet them, and we are getting to work. Okay, guys, so I've been working quite a bit, and me and the Hispanics have gotten pretty much everything done around here. I didn't want to video them any because uh, I felt that it might be hard to describe what exactly I was doing and I didn't want to confuse them or worry them with that. But I've actually been enjoying my time with them because they've been able to teach me some things. I've learned some Spanish today. Uh, I've shared a little bit about my story and I don't know, it's been kind of interesting just uh, trying to communicate with the language barrier because, like I said, they really don't talk much English, so it, it was kind of cool to be able to, uh, based on the language barrier and the difference in culture and all, be able to kind of communicate and get to know one another, which is super interesting, to me at least, because I know... Uh, this is something that I'm going to have to deal with whenever I do go to these foreign countries uh, for this mission trip, going on World Race. So, I don't know, it was just, it was cool to be able to start practicing that. But anyways, now it's getting to that time where I have to head back to Corinth. I know this really hasn't been an interesting vlog, but it's something that I wanted to do personally just because I wanted to have the memory. I wanted to be able to remember this house and be able to look back on it years on down the road. But I hope y'all will find some enjoyment out of this video and be able to take something away from watching it. And I thank you guys so much that support me and watch my videos and just sticking by me and following me in this journey and just following me in my walk with Christ. Just... uh I thank y'all for taking time out of the day and just spending it here with me and watching these videos. It means a lot more than you can imagine, and I hope y'all will stick with me to see what the future holds. But anyways, I'm getting ready to head back to Corinth, so I will see y'all later. Okay guys, time for the verse of the day. So today's verse comes from Romans chapter 5 verse 8. And it says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So this goes back to saying that even though, yes, we were sinners, God loved us so much that he sent Jesus Christ to die for us. That way we didn't have to receive the punishment of sin. And back to the video.
We are almost, almost done. We are almost done, finally. Just a few more things. Okay, so we got everything put in the storage building. Now we're just hauling a little bit of the trash off and then taking a few things to my grandmother's house and then we are finally, finally done. One hop this time. <laughs> two hops, two hops. Two right hops, two there. hops. <laughs> Everybody clap your hands. Okay guys, it's time for today's verse of the day. So today's verse comes from Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8. And it says, He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away all tears. He will remove forever all insults and mockery against his land and people. The Lord has spoken. So as Christians, we know that at times we do have to deal with people that persecute us, people that want to make fun of us and tell us we're wrong and that we're just following a bunch of nonsense. Unfortunately, those people are blinded and can't see the truth. Most of the time it's because they're unwilling to do the research themselves and just even try reaching out to God. But what this verse is saying is that eventually all that is going to come to an end. One day God is going to send Jesus back to come get his people and we will no longer have to deal with any of the struggles of this world. So I encourage you guys, hold on to your faith. Don't let others beat you down or convince you to stop following God or make you feel like you're a loser or that you're lame for wanting to be a Christian and follow God's word. Because in the end, you'll be the one on glory's side rejoicing with Jesus. There's a song out there by Jeremy Camp called There Will Be a Day. And the chorus says, there will be a day with no more tears, no more pain, no more fears. There will be a day when the burdens of this place will be no more and we will see Jesus face to face. So guys, just hold on to hope a little bit longer because this, this time here, this time where we do have this pain, these struggles, it's just, it's a short time in comparison to eternal life. So stand boldly for God. Proclaim His name and His glory. It's time for this generation of Christians to stand up. We've sat back for too long just letting things happen and letting our faith diminish. It's like we've become a nation that no longer believes in God and His promises. But the Bible tells me otherwise. I believe otherwise. So I encourage y'all to just put your faith in God and his promises. And I encourage those of y'all that don't have a relationship with God or your relationship is suffering to just step out on faith and trust God. This isn't just some make-believe thing to make me or anyone else think that we're better than anyone or that we're good people. When you really start to sit down and study the word, it impacts your faith. And it changes who you are as a person. You begin to see things in a way you never saw them before. I'm learning things every day about who I am and who I should be. And through growing closer to God, I'm learning so much more about how to live life and be at peace with this life. Because of God's love, I don't have to worry about what people think of me or trying to maintain some standard that this world tells me I have to. I don't have to worry about looking cool for people or anything. I can just be free to be myself. And that's what God's love does is it gives you that freedom. You just live in a relationship with God. But anyways, I hope some of what I said has made some sense to you guys and hopefully it 
provide some encouragement for you guys. And hopefully y'all will begin to open your minds to this and see that God loves you, that he desires your heart and wants a relationship with you. He wants to give you the best life you could ever imagine and even greater than you can imagine. If you just step out on faith, you'll be amazed at what God will do for you. All right, that's it for today's vlog. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Like always, go leave a like on the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already and tap that little bell to turn post notifications on. And make sure to go down to the description below and check out all my social media platforms like Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook. I'm on those pretty frequently and it's just a great way to be able to catch up with me outside of the vlogs. And while you're there, make sure to go check out my blog website for the World Race. That's zachtress.theworldrace.org. Again, that's linked in the description below, so go check that out. All right, guys. I love you, and God loves you. See you next time.